So I'm going to talk about three things today. Um, yeah, and this is so this is kind of to give a little more context, like what is like quantum physics and like what is this new modern physics, like what is this worldview? Because in the reading, they don't actually really talk about like what is like what's going on with physics. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you guys actually want to uh, read a chapter on that, I uploaded chapter four onto the Dropbox, and that goes over most of these concepts. Um, the concepts that we like touch on are like relativity, quantum mechanics, and then. Uh, general relativity, like modern cosmology. And these are just really short, and it's like, I just like really like limited, I try to cut it down as much as possible just so it can be more about like what is the Tao physics and we can get more like talking and stuff like that. Um, so like also to give a context of this, like um, a lot of times in, when we're studying consciousness, like we should think about what is the essence of reality in which we're in. Like, if we're studying biology or neuroscience, but what is the fabric of space and time which these systems emerge in the first place? And a lot of times that's not really thought about. A lot of times, like biologists say, oh, you know, the world's three dimensional, time is linear. But, like, when you look at relativity, okay, you know, that's not obviously not the case. But this is an extreme example when you're moving really fast. But just the idea that, you know, our worldview may not just be this Cartesian, like, thing that developed from ancient Greece, it may be something like a holographic, it may be something different. Um, so this is just to kind of give that idea. I don't have, we don't have time like to go really into the, really deeply into quantum physics or anything, that'll take like a lifetime, but this is just to get like a little, um, like preview. So does anyone know what relativity is? Special relativity? Yeah. I have an example I can Sure. So like, have you moved? Like, we have two observers, and they're both in different places, and when, when one moves faster than the other, you get a different you get a different perspective from each. Like, it doesn't look right. It looks right to them, to themselves, but when you look at it from the other person's view, it looks totally awkward or not, like not compatible with your mindset. Yeah, totally. that's a long time. Like, each, of, each um, frame of reference is in, in their correct frame, yeah. and everything is moving around them. So that, that's part of it, yeah. Um, so kind of the way that it came about was that they're trying to measure the speed of light. And um, they proposed this idea, this thing called the ether. They're like, okay, so like there's this like ether that this like this like fluid of space and time, and, like the sun is still in the ether, and then we're moving around the ether. And then like, so if you're moving one way and you shine light one way, or if you're moving the other way and you shine light the other way, the one should be faster and one should be uh, smaller, depending on which way you're moving in the ether. But what they actually found out is that no matter which way you shine the light, the light, the speed of light is always the same. So it's kind of like what you're saying, it's like each reference frame, like no matter what, the speed of light is always the same. So like I'll give you a little example. Like, okay, imagine that I'm going like five miles an hour, right? And then, so if you guys are still, and then I'm going five miles an hour, and then I throw a ball going five miles an hour, how fast would the ball be going in your perspective? Ten miles an hour. Ten miles an hour, okay. Yeah, so it's 10 miles an hour. So that's like Galilean addition. Like if it's one velocity plus another velocity, then to you guys it looks like those two velocities are added up. Okay, but now imagine this. Let's say I'm driving in a car that's half the speed of light, and then I turn on my headlights. Then, and then from my perspective, it looks like it's going to the speed of light. Like how fast do you think it would go, the speed of the headlights? One and a half times the speed of light. See, that's what you would think. It's still the speed of light. It's still the speed of light. So did everyone get that, the how it's still the speed of light? No? Okay. Do you want me to say that one more time? Yeah. Okay. So like, if I'm, if I'm in a car, right, and I'm moving, so if I'm in a car and it's still, and I turn on my headlights, the headlights go in front of me, the speed of light. Right? Now if I'm driving half the speed of light, and you guys are still, and I turn on my headlights, in my perspective, it's still going to go half the speed of light. But, I mean, it's going to go the full speed of light, but then in what, what, will, what will it be in your perspective? It'll be the speed of light. So it won't be one and a half. It's not like it adds. Like the speed of light is the, um, it's constant in every reference frame. No matter which reference frame you're in, the speed of light is always constant. That's the fundamental postulate of special relativity. And so this is completely different from um, uh, Newton's things. So, yeah. so basically what this does is that everything is like a little dilated. Because how is it possible that I'm in my car and when I turn on the when I turn on the headlights, I see it goes the speed of light, 
while you guys are seeing this, my headlights only go faster than me one half the speed of light. You know, there's a difference. And so what the difference is, um, there's like three kind of manifestations of this difference. Uh, one is that time actually slows down. So this is like in the famous like twin paradox. So there's two twins born at the same age, and then one of them like flies in the moon real quick, or goes really far, like some like star, like near the speed of light, and then comes back. Um, after the twin comes back, after moving really fast, near the speed of light, which twin do you think will be older? The one that's on Earth that didn't move, or the one that moved around? Which one will be older? The one on Earth. The one on Earth, yeah. So that means that as you speed up, what happens to your experience time? Slows down. Slows down. Exactly. So as you speed up and speed up, you, uh, time like slows down, slows down, slows down. So like, um, if a clock is, let's say you had a clock that's moving here and it's going to speed, and then you have a, a really fast object that has a little clock in it, the clock's going to be moving slower on the one that's moving fast than the one that's moving right here. So this whole idea of Newtonian time, like there's this three-dimensional universe and this time is this linear thing, and it's like, no, no, time is very, very dynamic. Time is depending on your speed. Something else that happens is like, when you're moving faster and faster, like your length contracts. So if you had like a ruler, it would get smaller and smaller versus like a ruler that's right here. And this is not like an optical illusion, this is like the essence of space itself. And this is like fundamental to physics. And then also like as you go faster, 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 your mass increases. So if there's this little subatomic particle that like decays in one second, if it's going near the speed of light, it's gonna, it can survive for many like hours or days because it's going so fast that its time is slowed down and its mass is going to be much, much higher than if it is when it was at rest. So these are like the main things. So like on the midterm and stuff, just remember like these three effects are important. So basically like this is from the Dow physics. This is just like showing us that like we say, okay, this is this size, this is this mass, this is how fast time moves, but no. As you start moving, things change. Things are really different sizes, things are different masses, and time is experienced differently. So this thing it says, um, does anyone want to read it? Preferably if you're in the front. Right? Yeah, I can read it. Okay. Uh, it is important to realize that it makes no sense to ask which is the real length of an object, just as it makes no sense in our everyday life to ask the real length of somebody's shadow. The shadow is a projection of points in three-dimensional <coughs> space on a two-dimensional plane, and its length will be different for different angles of projection. Similarly, the length of a moving object is the projection of points in four-dimensional space-time on the three-dimensional space, and its length is different in different frames of reference. Tau physics, copra, one second. Thank you. So it's, I think that was a cool analogy. Just like if you had a, a shadow, like if you change it, you know, the, the length of the shadow can increase, and then the length of three-dimensional objects can increase. Maybe it's a shadow or a projection of something higher dimensional. So like mathematically, this is like represented through space-time diagrams, and this is like um, so this is like space, and then this is time, and then you can define things like on a four-dimensional vectors and like four-dimensional things on this time, and you can like see how they interact. So this like worldview of like a higher dimensional is is how the math works in relativity. Yeah. So then, so as you go faster, you're saying your length decreases, which is opposite of what's observed by your eyes. Like if you, if you see someone, if you're sitting still and a car goes 300 miles an hour past you, take a picture, takes up the whole entire, yeah. you know, like then also your eyes, if you take a mental picture, you're just going to see like your whole frame of vision, you know, filled up by this thing. So it appears that the car becomes 20 feet long, but you're saying it's going, it's actually shorter than it is. It's thing. actually shorter. The, it appears longer because like we have not that many frames yeah, per have, second. We don't have good enough eyes. Yeah. But actually like, so when you're in the car, like, so there's this thing like when you're move, when you're moving like everything is always at rest to your perspective even if you're moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like even if you're in the car going really fast like you experience time as moving like normal. And then when you turn on your lights you see the light go at the speed of light in front of you. So that's like the, the speed of light is constant in every reference frame and time is always like at a normal rate in your reference frame. Cool. So that's like relativity and like Basically, this just like expands our ideas of what is space and time. Like they're interconnected, and like this is completely different from the old <coughs> worldview model. And like connecting it to the Tao physics, like I mean, it's not like a, a 
exact connection, but like a lot of the ancient like Eastern mysticism kind of saw time as interconnected with you know space, and that they could like when they meditate, they're interconnected with this a larger. They're not just um, like a they're not just like an individual unit in space, but but actually that they're connected with space and time. That wasn't a very good analogy, but hopefully you guys liked it. Um, <laughs> quantum physics. So we're going to talk a little bit about quantum physics. Um, so quantum physics differs a lot from relativity because relativity is this like smooth understanding of space and time where everything is like perfectly calculated. It's um, it's more like there's no like quantized units. It's all it's more like a smooth like smooth. Um, so the quantum physics completely changed this, and they basically said that everything is quantized, which means there's discrete little particles of it, like energy, momentum, and mass are all quantized. Um, yeah. So there's also this thing that uh, particles are also like waves, and so there's um, when you have a lower a, a momentum. Or actually, when you have a uh, higher momentum, yeah, this is like the uncertainty principle. When you have higher momentum, like you have a, momentum is mass times velocity, you, you, the wavelength is more defined. So like, let's say I throw a like baseball. A baseball has a huge momentum. So like, it's like quantum wave, the De Broglie wave is going to be really small. So it's not really going to behave like a wave, it's just going to behave like a particle. But let's say I have an electron, right? Electron is like, super, super low momentum, it's, going to, it's wave nature is going to be much, much more apparent. So everything has this wave nature where it's just momentum versus the wavelength. How do they measure this? Like, like how, how do you know what something's wave momentum is? Okay. Like how, how does like the wave the momentum is the just, actual object? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see that okay. in like the next slide. But um, That's fine. how do you like measure momentum? Momentum is just mass time velocity. And then you can see it's wave nature through like diffraction or other properties of wave that we uh, talked about, such as the double slick 